Hey everybody and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In this video we're going to show you how to do Android development using Kotlin. Now if you're looking for Android development using Java, I do have some previous videos on this channel, so make sure you check those out. In this video we're going to set up Android Studio and show you how to get started with it. So after installing Android Studio for the first time, you'll see this window, and this will walk you through the setup process for Android Studio. So I'm going to hit next, and I'm just going to do the standard installation. If you know what you're doing and you want to customize it, feel free to do that. Now this is one of the most important decisions you'll make when installing Android Studio. Whether you go with the light theme or the dark theme, that's up to you. Uh, for this tutorial series, I'm going to be using the light theme. It just It's a lot better contrast for the eyes, but if you want to use the dark theme, feel free to do that as well. All right, so here's the fun part. We're going to install all the different SDK components. As you can see, uh, there's several hundred megabytes each, so this could take quite a bit to download. If you want to look at something other than just a progress bar, you can certainly click on show details and that'll tell you everything that it's currently downloading. I'm going to fast forward this video, so I'll see you on the other side. So during the installation process, you're going to see this pop up either on Windows or Mac that says Hacksome Installation wants to make changes. Now this is going to be the software that integrates with your Intel processor to make your Android emulator go really, really fast. So highly recommend that you install Hacksome and Let's continue the installation. All right, so finally we have our installation finished. So we're gonna hit the finish button and we're welcomed into Android Studio. Now I'm using Android Studio 3.01. And so you must be using at least Android version three in order to get Kotlin support. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start a new Android Studio project. If you have one that you already wanna open, you can select this option and there's a couple other ones that we'll go through later. Okay, so for the first screen, you're going to be greeted with the application name. I'm just going to call this first app. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's going to also put it into the first app folder. Within a folder called Android Studio Projects, you can certainly change that location by selecting this button here. And then the company domain. Um, I think this is fine for right now. Let's uh, get rid of that example part. And now the next thing that's very important for this series is to make sure that the checkbox to include Kotlin support is checked for obvious reasons. You do not need the C++ support. If you have any C++ libraries that you want to include with your Android application, you can certainly include C++ support for that. Now, Android is built off of Linux, and as you may know, Linux is programmed in C, and just because Android usually runs in Java or Kotlin, kind of the same thing, they run both run off of the same virtual machine, you can also run C++ native code. So uh, a lot of games will, will use that support. And um, if you're getting really low into the hardware, or again, if you have libraries that use C++, you can certainly use that option, but we're not gonna do that in this series. So let's get on to the next one. All right, so this one is uh, kind of important to start off with. Usually the defaults are okay. So this is going to ask you what platform you want your application to be deployed to. So by default, it's phone and tablet. We also have Android Wear, such as a watch or something else. We have uh, TV and a couple other things such as Android Auto and Android Things, referring to Internet of Things, uh, hardware and, and whatnot. So you can certainly develop for that with Android Studio, which is really cool. But for the minimum Android version that we want to support, by default is API 15, which is pretty good. Uh, it says by targeting API 15 and later, your app will run on approximately 100% of devices. That sounds really great. However, there is a few issues with supporting earlier versions of Android. Now, if you're confused by this, don't worry, just select API 15, you'll probably be okay for very simple apps. But if you hit help me choose, it'll bring up this dialog box here that shows you all the different versions of Android and their penetration rate. So for example, if we used API level 15, as it said, 100% of users are at least using that. That's not exactly true, but mostly everybody who has a modern device that's been made in the last couple of years is running at least 4.0 or API level 15. You often hear me refer to both the Android operating system version the name of it, ice cream sandwich in this case, or the API level. And uh, Android operating systems with the same name, such as Jelly Bean, may have different API levels. And that just means they've added APIs or changed things that warrant an API version change, but maybe not 
a Android um, operating system name change, but certainly the version number also changes as well. So let's say I wanted to support something like API 19, which is usually what I support for my applications. That will give me at least 90% of Android users to either sell the application to or just have them install it on their device. Now, uh, I've in my own analytics, I've noticed that this number is a lot higher for API level 19. Uh, it's more like 90, 90, 95, 96, something like that. So um, certainly you could always start off on an earlier version, say API level 17, and then always move up from there. But that's really up to you and kind of what your demographic is. For very simple applications, just go ahead and support 15 and it's highly unlikely you're gonna have a problem with that. So I'm just going to keep the default here and hit next. And then the next screen is going to ask you which starter template do you wanna use for this? So I can certainly have an application that has no activity at all. I can start an application with a basic activity with a floating action button if that more matches the functionality of my application. I can have one with a bottom navigation. These are kind of like tabs in a web browser where you can tab through the different screens that you'll be seeing. You can have an empty activity, which is what we'll start off with. And you can certainly look through the list of other templates that we have to start our application. So again, empty activity, we're gonna hit the next button. And then it's going to ask us what our main activity is going to be called. Now, activities are essentially screens within Android. So usually if you have a settings screen, that is going to be a uh, an activity, like a settings activity, you might call it. Our main activity, because this is going to be a very simple application, is just going to be called main activity. So I'm going to hit next. It's going to install some additional components for me. And then we're going to hit finish once that's done. Okay, so once Gradle is done building, this is going to be our dependency task runner uh, software that's going to kind of run in the background, download a whole bunch of components. It's going to pop up a tip of the day. I highly recommend that you read through these, uh, at least for the first couple months that you're using Android Studio. And you're gonna see usually that your Gradle project sync has failed. Now, if you try again or you look at the, any of these options, that's not going to help you. What's missing is, if you remember when we talked about the different API levels, well, I chose API level 15, and it's going to use the latest SDK to compile that, and then it's going to also need to support back to 15. Well, I don't have any of that software yet. So if we go down here, it says install missing platforms and sync projects. So this is what's going to fix our issue. Again, it's gonna be an additional download and it's gonna download all the necessary software that we need. So in this case, it's Android SDK Platform 26. Now, if you remember, we support all the way back to 15, but in this case, we're always going to use the latest SDK to compile. So in this case, for this video at the time, it is API level 26. So we have to install that, go ahead and select it, hit accept if you wanna read through the terms and conditions, and then next. And then we wait again for an additional download. Hopefully you're over a fast connection where this is pretty quick for you. But go ahead and pause the video. I'll speed this up for you so you don't have to sit through it. And I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we finished that and I'm gonna hit finish on that. And then Gradle is going to rebuild our project. Okay, so once we install those, we need to install the build tools. So again, click on the little error message here in the link that will provide us with the, the new files for that. And again, let's wait for the download to happen. All right, that went pretty quick. Hopefully this goes quickly for you as well, but there is some stuff to install, but at least you know what's going on now when, when you go ahead and install Android Studio. There's just a bunch of different pieces of SDKs and build tools and whatever. All right, so once we have all of that, Gradle will finally build for us. You can see that the status for Gradle is, it's downloading some other dependencies, it's some jar files down here. You can see the progress bar kind of doing its thing, the different number of processes running. So if Android Studio is either not responding or it seems a little slow, always check this bottom status bar to see what it's doing. And then up here we see that Gradle Project Sync is in progress. All right, finally, everything is done. And let me introduce you to Android Studio. So if this is the first time that you're seeing Android Studio, welcome. 
And on the left-hand side is kind of our more important areas where all of our files live. So we have our Android manifest file, which we'll get to in future videos. And then we have all of our, it says Java, but this is going to be a Kotlin file. If you can see that there's a little K under here. So in our main activity, if we double click on that, that's what's currently being shown here on the right-hand side. And then the next important file that we'll be using in this tutorial is under our resource folder or our res folder. And so if I expand that out and hit layout and double click on activity main, it will uh, load up our layout file for our screen. And so if I was to launch this right now, you would see an application that says, hello world. That's what that little says right there. So this screen is what's going to allow us to drag in buttons if we want to. We can also drag in checkboxes. And here is the component tree that we can kind of rearrange how these go. You can nest some of these items and we'll, we'll get into this in, in future videos. But for right now, I'm just going to hold down shift, select those two and then hit my delete key to remove those. All right, the next thing we need to do is this application is ready to launch. So if I go up here to this like kind of square with it's the Android um, guy popping his head up a little bit. If I click on that, that's going to give us our Android virtual device manager. Now I don't have any currently installed. So let's go ahead and create our first AVD or Android virtual device. And so this screen is going to ask us which hardware we want to uh, create. So we can create a tablet such as the Nexus 10 uh, that's somewhere down here in the list or it's going to start us off with the Nexus 5X. You can choose a Pixel or a Pixel 2, and you can see that they have different densities. They have different screen sizes. So this is a 5-inch screen with a 1920 pixels uh, vertical and 1080 pixels horizontal. The uh, Pixel 1, I guess, is also the same specs. The Nexus 5X has a little bit larger screen, but the same resolution. So I'm just going to choose the Pixel 2. It seems to be the most popular device at the time. And guess what? We have one more thing to download. We have to choose which operating system we want to emulate. So we can use the latest um, Oreo, which is API level 26, Nougat, Lollipop, which is 22, etc. Usually I try to go for something that's pretty new, and then I'll create another Android virtual device that is on an older system. So these are the recommended ones that Android Studio suggests. And I'm just going to choose Oreo, and I'm going to hit download. So I don't have any currently installed. And again, as I said, we have to download an additional piece of software for this to run on. I'm going to hit accept, next, and wait for this to download. All right, so our image for our emulator is finally downloaded, and we're ready to install it on our device that we chose, and that's going to be the Pixel 2. So we have this one here. This is Oreo, and we're just going to choose that as our selected uh, Android version that we're going to install on our AVD. You can download other ones to test out other versions, but I promise that's going to be the last download that you'll have to do, at least for this video. So give it a good name. Uh, I think for Pixel 2 API 26 is fine for our purposes. You can always uh, tweak these settings, such as graphics, if you want to try to get hardware graphics acceleration working with OpenGL ES uh, 2.0, etc. So all these settings look good to me. You can uh, do advanced settings as well, and we'll finish this up. And once we have finished that, again, we can add additional virtual devices or we can launch this one. You can launch this one or if we compile the application from Android Studio by running the app up here, uh, both have the same effect. And so you can just launch this to test it out and make sure it's working. But most of the time, you're gonna launch that from Android Studio. So if I hit play, here we can run our application on our new Android virtual device. If you have a Android device, a physical device, and it's plugged into your computer, there might have to be a little bit of setup for enabling USB debug. And if it is properly set up, you'll see it here as connected devices and then available virtual devices. We're going to select this one to run it. And this will launch our AVD and it'll boot up the operating system. Now this operating system is being emulated. So it does take a little bit of time to run on the system. Hopefully you have the Haxum uh, software installed if you have an Intel processor, because that'll speed up the process a whole lot. Okay, our build is now done. It's just waiting for the emulator to start up and there it goes. 
going to install the APK or the Android package file to the simulator and voila, we have our Hello World application installed and you can see where our interface is and what is on our emulator. So that's all I got for you guys for this video. In the next video, we're going to show you how to add UI elements such as buttons and text views to our screen and interact with them using Kotlin. So stick around for the next video. If you want to see more videos on Android development, iOS development, and 3D game development, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.